Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Reveal with Dr. Mike, but that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Savvy episode. Actually, this is a Photography 101 episode, and today we're going to talk about using a flash or a speed light, a type that you probably may not have heard of. It's called the automatic flash or speed light. And I have one here. Here's actually the box. I actually got this free. So these are very inexpensive. This came with something else that I bought a while back and let me show you what it looks like on the camera it looks like any other speed light you have a speed light and you can adjust it and turn it and everything um, so what what can, what is an automatic flash well most of you if you have a camera and you have the speed light you know what TTL is TTL means through the lens metering and those are flashes that use the computer in the camera to get the proper exposure flash exposure so there's a computer in the flash on a TTL flash there's a computer in the camera they communicate back and forth and they give you the proper exposure and that's wonderful but those flashes tend to be a bit more expensive and in addition they're specific to the particular brand so you cannot use a Canon TTL type flash on a Nikon camera for instance or vice versa there's also manual flashes which again look just like this but they are just triggered by the camera and they don't communicate at all with the camera except for that triggering and with those flashes the way that you adjust the right exposure is either by controlling the output manually on the back of the flash or adjusting the aperture and they're pretty easy to use and I'll probably do a tutorial on that too but imagine an automatic flash as being something in between a manual flash and a TTL flash and these flashes existed before there were computerized cameras and they allowed a high degree of automatic exposure just by using some simple circuitry so what this camera does is if it's in the automatic mode it will fire its flash that flash light will bounce back to the flash and hit this little photo sensor here and turn the flash off assuring proper exposure so to have that to work properly you've got to do a couple of things the first thing you've got to do is read the manual which is very simple and, they, and usually you're going to operate the camera in manual mode and the instructions will tell you what to do now this particular flash and each flash is different has a just a manual mode where it's going to fire at full power and then it has two automatic settings you can see there's like a red bar and a blue bar and they, they just adjust the flash output so for instance if I was going to use the red bar I would have my um, my shutter speed at let's say 1 60th of a second I could choose an ISO of 200 and an F of 4 or I could choose an ISO of 400 and an F of 5.6 and get the proper exposure just by doing that and that would be from picture to picture so I would just have to set the camera up once and let's say I was at a party or something and I could pretty much go around and once once everything was set up it would act like a TTL flash in the in the sense that I would get a proper exposure but you have to set that up manually now there's a couple things you need to know just in general when you do something like that or when you use any non TTL flash that doesn't communicate directly with the with the camera the first thing is is that most cameras will allow you to choose an ISO but you can often pick what's called auto ISO where you can say to the camera hey I'd like you to use an ISO of 200 but if you can't do that do whatever you want go up to 1600 or 3200 well you want to turn that function off because that will screw up your exposure so you just want to be able to have a set ISO following your instructions now this particular camera this Nikon has an optical viewfinder but there are cameras that have a hot shoe a standard hot shoe and they either have an EVF or an electronic viewfinder or they might even just have the screen on the back and no viewfinder at all now often those cameras will reflect what you're doing in the camera directly in the viewfinder which is awesome if you're trying to do things manually but not so much with the flash because if you have the camera set manually the camera's not going to know that the flash is on here and everything will look very underexposed so you need to turn off that kind of automatic setting now in Sony cameras you'd go to the live view display 
and then the, uh, the option called setting effect should be off. On the Olympus camera that I was using, which was a EPL uh, camera, uh, there was another setting in there that was set, it was a different term, but it was the same sort of thing where you turn that automatic adjustment off, and then you're going to have a bright view in your viewfinder or in your in your on your screen, and you'll be able to see what you're composing, so you can take the the picture properly. So let's take a look at some actual pictures. These are pretty dull pictures of Christmas stuff because that's what I could find today. So we'll take a look at them. Um, and let's hold on one second as we go into that screen. Okay, so here you can see me taking a picture of a part of the Christmas tree with the flash off but set at the settings that the flash recommended, completely underexposed. Now I have the flash set just in manual, so it's going to flash in full power, um, which is going to overexpose everything. Now I'm in one of the automatic settings, so everything is set up properly, so I can take the flash, and you can see on this snowman, which has a lot of reflective surface, that everything is properly exposed because that light's going to bounce back off that snowman. And the same could be said about this piece of, of wrapping paper. It has a lot of reflective surface, so that light's going to easily bounce back, and it's going to turn the flash off at the right time, and you're going to get the right exposure. This picture shows a more difficult scenario where there's not a lot of reflective surface. I'm really right in on the tree and you have a lot of that dark green fake branch stuff and some ornaments that aren't very reflective. It still gives you an exposure that's okay, that certainly I could adjust in a photo editing program, but it's a bit underexposed. So I'm going to go from, in this case, the recommended uh, f of 5.6 down a full stop to an f of 4 letting more light in and you can see that the exposure is correct. So let me get out of there and we'll reduce this over here and we're back again. So you, you, you what you see is that generally speaking it's going to give you the right exposure. You might have to do a little fiddling with your aperture setting either up or down depending on on what you're getting in the screen when you review the picture but more often than not it's going to get you right where you need to be and so the, you have the great advantage of these flashes that are generally very cheap they're universal if, if you have a standard hot shoe I could put this on this Nikon I could put it on a Canon I could put it on a, um, a an Olympus or any other camera that has a standard hot shoe and as long as I make the proper adjustments I'm pretty much getting almost a TTL like exposure with uh, something less expensive and more universal. So I hope you found that this tutorial was uh, helpful. If you liked it, please subscribe to my video channel and please give me a thumbs up. And as always, if you get some time, please listen to my audio podcast. It's called Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike. You can find it on iTunes and other podcatching sites. And also, as always, have a wonderful day and Happy New Year.